Hello everybody, my name is Brian. I am a character artist here at the Animation Academy at Hollywood Studios. And you may remember that I taught you guys how to draw Olaf. And that became very, very popular. So I am back again to teach you how to draw Anna from Disney's Frozen. So, as with any of these drawings, we're going to start out with circle. Best way to draw circles circle, use your whole arm. Shoulder naturally rotates, so we'll practice really quick. And that whole arm rotation, keep everything else stationary so you can actually draw a circle. It's very, very important. All right, so the key is we're going to draw our lines really, really lightly. Start them out light. We'll double check them, make sure we, uh, we like them, and we can darken them as we go. So we are going to start about um, just a couple inches down from the top of your paper. And we're going to start with a circle about the size of a grapefruit or softball. And you can go around multiple times. Key to good circles, repetition, going around, you're able to fix your flat spots, your indents, anything that makes it not a circle. Don't worry about it being perfect, it just needs to be light. Really, really light. Alright, now we're going to divide our circle in half from top to bottom. Our guidelines are that it tells where we put the pieces of the character. Uh, like eyes, nose, mouth, etc, etc, etc. We need to know where the center of her head is. So she's going to be looking off towards the left. So we're going to do a curved guideline, starting from the top where this line touches the circle. It's going to create a crescent moon shape on the inside of your circle, which is going to go back down to where the line touches the circle at the bottom. It should be about equal sides on both sides. We're going to go down about a quarter of the way down from the top of our circle, and we're going to draw another curve just like that first curve right here, but we're going to do it in the opposite way. And this one we're going to drag down a little bit below our circle. Keep your lines really light. We're going to have lots of overlapping lines. We'll go about a quarter of the way up from the bottom of your circle. We're going to draw a slightly curved horizontal guideline, which will curve across. It should create a little triangle over here in the corner, a little triangle over here in this corner as well. We'll go about an inch above that and draw a parallel curve, like so. All right, we're going to use some measuring next. We'll use our thumb and our index finger, measure from uh, this bottom horizontal line to the bottom of the circle, like so. And keep your hand just like that. Slide down so your index finger touches the bottom of your circle, and where your thumb lands, you will draw a line. That's going to help us line up that chin. All right, now we're going to start to carve her face out of this. And I'm going to start just above this top horizontal guideline, just a little bit on the inside of the circle. And I'm going to draw a curve on the inside of the circle. It's barely in there. Once I get in between these two curved guidelines, I'm going to dip in a little bit and curve back out. So I run back into where that guideline touches the side of the circle. It's like a very shallow, stretched out letter S. Then we go down just below the circle, curve inwards, and down to that line. This is her cheekbone right there, so you want to keep it really light in case you give her the mumps or something. You want to be able to fix that later. Once we hit this line down here, we're going to curve across the bottom, creating our chin. Staying just below the circle, we'll run up and run into this line right over here. All right, now we're going to go back up to the top, and we're going to follow the top of the circle out to the right. I'm going to leave the circle. We're going to create her traveling hat that she's wearing that she gets from Oaken's. Come to an angle. And then shoot across to run into the bottom there. So that creates a traveling hat for the most part. That traveling hat is fur lined. So for now, using our light lines, we're just going to draw an arch starting from just above, about an inch above her uh, side of her face right there. I'm going to curve up until I run into that guideline, and then curve back down until I run into that top horizontal guideline. So it'll eventually become her fur lining, but for now, it's just a light arch. All right, as we uh, keep going through this, we're going to measure once again from the top of your circle to that bottom line right here. Drag that down to the bottom of that line where your thumb lands. You will draw a straight line very, 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 very lightly. That tells us how far down her braids are going to go. 
she's got those double braids. And what we're going to do is, uh, for now, we're just going to make it look like she has breadsticks dangling off, off of the bottom of her head. And the braid on this side is going to be the same width as the hat. So we're just going to go down at a slight angle to the left, run down to that line, and back up. Very, very light. Over here in this flat spot on the face in between the cheekbone and the chin is where we draw the other one, going at the same angle, another breadstick sticking out over there. Just below the chin right here, we're going to draw a check mark, which will run down just to the left of that dividing line and then curve back up. This is her neckline. She's got her cloak that she's wearing. And then to the left of that, we draw a little curve to show the neck. All right, her eyes are uh, going to be wide ovals. If you're not sure how to draw an oval, just draw a circle incorrectly. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're drawing wide ovals, not tall ovals. If you draw tall ovals, you're going to make her really, really surprised. So you want to make sure you get good wide ovals. And it's going to be in between these guidelines right here. It's going to be partially to the left of that dividing line. I'm going to draw a nice wide oval. Now, leaning against the center guideline right here, the other eye is going to be more like a circle. It's just pushed against those guidelines on the side of the face. Like so. Should be about one eye width apart from each other, just like regular human anatomy. Above those eyes, we get eyebrows. And uh, the eyebrow for the right eye over here is going to be in between the center guideline and the dividing line. And it's like a stretched out swoop. It's going to curve down like this. We add a little bit of thickness to it, curve down. Over here on the left, it's going to be a little bit higher up. So across from the top of this eyebrow is where we get the bottom of the other eyebrow. So it's like she's raising her eyebrow at us. And coming off the side of her face, we get a, a raised eyebrow. She's not sure what's going on. From the tip of that eyebrow, we draw the bridge of the nose. The bridge of the nose is going to be going the opposite direction from the center guideline. We're going to hit right at the bottom horizontal guideline where the center guideline touches the horizontal guideline. And then we run into the circle and curve down. That gives us our nose. A little angle inwards. So we're going to go in a little bit to, uh, from the nose the bottom of the circle and draw a little curve for a nostril with a curve around it which will run into that guideline right there. Down from the middle of the eye just below the nose we're going to draw her mouth. They're going to give her a bit of a smirk which will curve up right where that dividing line touches the bottom of the circle like so. And we can open that mouth up kind of a stretched out squared off letter U shape and we'll worry about putting detail into that a little bit later. Next, we get our bangs. And um, anytime you draw hair, you just want to be really loose with it. Um, it's hair. It blows with the wind. Um, so you never want to make it rigid. You don't want it to be plasticky. It shouldn't look like it's molded onto her head. So uh, we're going to start up at the top following this curved line right here that we drew. Let's kind of go off to the left. And we can add some little pieces of hair. Basically just kind of stretched out letter V shapes. You can kind of do whatever you want with this in a way because um, hair changes so often and if it's windy outside it's going to change. You can draw a little curve over here running down by the eye. We can overlap some, some lines kind of running along the center guideline to her face coming down by the eyebrow and back up. And we can reverse our flow once we hit this uh, dividing line. And we start to overlap the hat now. Now we can pull the uh, uh, extra little curve across the top here into the hat to just show a little more where the hair is kind of stretched down into her braids. So we have a little bit of space in there. You can go in and you can adjust things as you go if you notice that you need to pull things over a little bit.
All right. Now we hop in with some darker lines. And we can just go back over the hair. So once you're happy with the hair at the top for the bangs, then you can go and trace back over it. It's going to be very uniform at first. Not really going to look that much like hair. then what makes it look like hair is strands. Let's go in there and add some strands. And you can have them, you know, leaving the, uh, the rigidness of the bangs. That's really what you need to do if you want to make something look like hair, you add strands. All right, now we've got this arch above the top. As I mentioned before, that's the uh, inner fur lining to the hat. So we're going to go ahead and just add fluff. Just little juts of rounded off fluff as we go across the top. I'll be really fluffy with it. Now we can get the hat. We're going to add a little bit of um, piping to the inside of the hat. It's just going to be a parallel curve, like so. Then um, go back and look over the face. Make sure there's nothing you need to change about it before we make it permanent. Uh, if you did make it look like she has the mumps, you want to be able to fix that. Um, so go in there and trace back over the outline of the face once you're happy with it. Take your time with it if you, if you really need to. You remember as you're doing this, if you're not liking how your drawing is going, just let it go. We can pop down and work on the braids next. Um, with braids, everybody's seen braids. Um, don't overthink it too much. It's a lot easier than it, than it looks like it should be. So we're going to go up to the top, and I'm going to draw. So we get this kind of uh, walnut shape kind of pushed up underneath of the hat right there. And now we start to build the braid. Of course, with a, with a real braid, you're kind of going back and forth with the hair. Um, this is all just about repetition. So I'm going to draw a curve here from the bottom center of this top piece. That's going to kind of bow off to the right. Then I draw a curve around it, like this, and like this. So lots of repetition. And then from the bottom of that line, I'm going to bow off the other direction. And do the same thing. And then once again, the other direction. Same thing. And the bottom will kind of cap it off with sort of a round off letter V, smaller piece. Right there, can throw a line in the middle of that. She, uh, her hair tie is her own hair, so you just draw a little squiggly there to, to show that. And then the tips of the braid look like the end of a paintbrush. And over here we do the same thing. We're taking off from about this little notch of braid, though, because of the angle. And so we can actually start with the curves on this side, like that. Add the curve on the inside. Then do our reverse. And just build onto it the same way we did with the other side. All right, then of course to make it look like it's hair, we add the strands again. Just lost little strands line. It's amazing what you can do by just kind of scribbling in there. Of course on the left braid she has that white streak that uh, 
was thanks to Elsa. So if you end up coloring this, remember to kind of intertwine that white streak in there. And while we're down there now, we can get that cloak. The side of the neck, and we can do a, a parallel check mark shape. Now we tackle the facial features. And we're gonna go up to the eyes. And we're gonna darken the top curve of the eye. We're gonna thicken that up. Just add the mascara in there and thicken that up. And we're gonna cake the mascara off to the right into a, a point. Maybe she's born with it. And we can use a thinner line to finish the bottom. And then we add the eyelid across the top, which is just a little curve across the top. Like so. now on the inside of that, uh, we're going to draw the iris and the pupil. And whenever you draw iris and pupil, you always want to draw the whole shape. That's very, very important. You don't want to get lazy with that. If you draw half circles or slanted lines, you will make your characters cross-eyed or lazy. I look like their eyes are only the back of their head. Um, generally, you don't want that. So. This time, though, you're drawing smaller circles, so you use your wrist and your fingers to get it. And you're still using your shoulder. Your shoulder is going to be pushing the rest of your arm up. Um, but you're using your wrist and your fingers to get the smaller circle in there. We're going to take up a good portion of that eye with the iris. And then we get a pupil on the inside of that. Another circle. Add a glimmer of light in there, then fill in the pupil around it. You can put a light shade through that iris. As long as you keep it light, you don't want to make it solid black or it'll blend with the pupil and you'll give her a really dilated eye. You can go ahead and get that eyebrow while you're over there. Once again, don't get discouraged while you're doing this. A uh, character like Anna takes a lot of practice. Just keep going. Don't give up. You can do it. I'm going to go over the other eye. Darken the top curve once again. Thicken that up so she looks easy breezy and beautiful. Come to a point. and then get the eyelid. Now on this eye with the iris and the pupil, it's going to be partially masked just because her head is turned away from us, so we get a different angle. So you still want to see the whole thing, that's important. So you pencil it in really, really light, and then of course you darken the part in the whites of the eyes. You always want to take your time though when it comes to placement of your iris and pupils. Then get the pupil on the inside. Glimmer of light, fill it in, and shade that iris. We can pop up and get the eyebrow now. With the eyebrows, you can put a nice light gray shade on there. Her eyebrows are just like her sisters, they're kind of a grayish beige tone. Um, whereas, of course, Anna's hair is kind of a strawberry blonde. All right, from there, we're going to trace back over the uh, bridge of the nose. And the nose itself. And the mouth. Add a little curve in the corner. You have the bottom lip now on the inside, and it's going to be thick and then a little bit thinner on the right. Just because our face is turned away from us. Then we get the upper lip over here. All 
All right, then we can give her some freckles. So I'm going to be really light with the freckles. They're going down below the eye here. There's lots of random little dots. And you can put a shade on the uh, inner piping to the hat. Just use aside your pencil and shade really fast. And then this area down here for the cloak. Go ahead and sign your drawing. It's very, very important. You always want to sign your work. It's good to date your work as well so you can look back ahead and see the progression of things. Because a character like Anna, you're going to want to practice a lot. You want to look at your first drawing as, as a bit of a fixer-upper. And then just roll from there. So that's Anna from Frozen. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, just remember these things take lots of practice. You want to draw these things over and over and over again uh, before you get really, really good at it. Anna is one of the most complicated characters that we draw, so don't worry if yours isn't 100% perfect the first time out. These things are going to take practice. And if you make it down here to Walt Disney World, come stop by and take a class from me or one of my fellow character artists. You'll have a great time. Thanks so much, guys.